The interest rates are too high and I can't rent out my investment property. Should I sell my brand new property immediately after closing, after receiving my HST rebate back? This is a question I received from one of my viewers, so I'm going to answer this question in this video. I'll give you three things to consider when trying to make this decision and then use some simple math to help you make your decision. Just as a disclaimer, this is not legal, tax, or financial advice. This is purely a matter of my own opinion, and I highly recommend that you speak with your lawyer, tax accountant, or financial advisor to consult with your specific matters. With that out of the way, let's get to the video. It's the start of 2024, and the real estate market has gone cold. There are a lot of investors who have purchased new construction properties and are in trouble as the central bank policy rate was risen from 0.25% to 5%, which was risen 10 times in less than two years. This was a huge shock to the system, especially for those who are on variable rates or whose mortgages have renewed during this period of time, suddenly adding hundreds if not thousands of extra dollars to their housing costs. I was personally hit with this as well as one of my own mortgages for one of my investment properties went from $2,150 to just over $2,900 per month. In addition, I had four closings this year, so I'm paying the extra high interest rates on an additional four properties as well. So trust me, I feel your pain. Although painful, my financial situation is probably a lot different than many of you watching the video right now because the majority of my investments were purchased before the prices really jumped. Although we are going through this real estate turmoil right now, my core beliefs and investment strategies have not changed. I believe that the real estate game is a long-term game. So personally, I'm holding and I'm not selling anything. Many of you watching this video right now probably aren't so fortunate and you're probably dreading the day that you're going to close on your new property and start paying for your property. Or you may have already closed and are questioning how long you're going to be able to last at this rate. I do sincerely sympathize with your situation because I'm sorry to tell you that you're going to have to make some difficult decisions. For many of you, the interest rate are so high that even if you were able to rent the property, you would be paying out of pocket hundreds or thousands of dollars per month. So then the question is, should I abandon ship and sell or bail water or, and hold until the market recovers? The short answer is, and the answer to any real estate question is, it depends on your situation. However, there are three additional things to consider if you do decide to sell. So number one, you will not be eligible for the HST rebate. If you've already collected the HST rebate, you'll have to repay it. If you sell the property within one year of your occupancy, you can see the source of this information on the government website in the link in the description below. So you can see here it says repayment of the NRRP rebate or the... Uh, new residential rental property rebate. You will have to repay the NRP rebate if you claim a rebate for type six, lease of la building and land and all of the following conditions are met. Okay, so the first thing is the rebate was for a qualifying residential unit. Uh, and then here, this right here, the unit is sold within one year after it is first occupied as a place of residence after its construction or up to the last substantial renovation. So basically, if you sell it within one year, uh, the and lastly, the purchaser is not buying the unit for his or her primary residence, so it's not a principal residence purchase. In this situation, you'll have to repay an amount equal to the rebate plus interest at the prescribed rate. The interest will apply for the period beginning on the day the rebate was paid to you or used to reduce the amount you owed and ending on the day you repay the rebate. So you'll be on the hook for this, and if your net purchase price was more than $450,000, that's $24,000 plus interest right there. Uh, and to play it safe, I always do one year from the actual final closing rather than the occupancy. But this is a question you should ask and clarify with your tax accountant in terms of the tax timelines. Number two, the residential property flipping rule. Starting from January 1st, 2023, any property that is sold within one year of ownership is considered a flipped property. There are some exceptions to this like death and other life altering circumstances. You can see the details of this in the government website in the link in the description below. What this rule basically says is that if you flip your property, you're going to be fully taxed as business income. So you don't qualify for the 50% capital gains inclusion rate or the principal resident exemption. 
Depending on your tax bracket, this could be a hefty tax on any profits, if there are any. If you're in the highest tax bracket, that would be over 50% of your profits. Number three, selling is an expensive proposition. Not only will you have to pay real estate fees, which are typically around 5% plus HST of the selling price, you should also consider the opportunity cost. If you're selling in a down market like today's market, this can become even more expensive as you'll be losing out on any future potential gains of the property and locking in your losses once the property is sold. To illustrate this, let's go into an example. Say you bought a pre-construction property for a million dollars three years ago, and then the interest rates spiked and the market slowed down, so the prices dropped by like 20% so that you could only sell it for $800,000 in today's market. If you decide to sell, you know, most people think you're just losing $200,000, but you got to plus any closing costs, land transfer taxes, lawyer fees, and development charges. In addition, you're going to have to pay the real estate fees on top of that. So your actual $200,000 will actually equal over $305,000 loss in reality, which is like another $105,000 more than your original $200,000. You also lose out on the HSC rebate. So that's another $24,000 plus interest on top of that. So that's going to be around $330,000 at the end of the day. Everything boils down to math. So let's look at the above example as a mathematical problem to help us make some decisions. I know as soon as I said math, a lot of you are going to get bored out of your minds and turn off the video. But the reality is, until you understand the math, you don't understand anything about investing. Investing equals knowing how to do math. So I hope you can appreciate the math because without math, I really don't understand how you can make any meaningful financial decisions. In the real world, you really don't need to understand complicated math. All you need to understand is how to add, subtract, divide, and multiply. Basic math is all you really need, but it's shocking how many people don't even understand this. If you don't, I highly recommend that you address this. This is one of the first areas that you, I would advise you to study and become familiar with, as it will change your life and help you make better decisions in the future. Most of you can do this, so follow along. To make it easy, I've already prepared the example with the numbers all broken down, so I don't have to make this from scratch. You can see in this example, if we were to rent this property out for um, $3,500 a month immediately uh, after occupancy, uh, we will have a loss of about uh, $3,300 per month during the interim occupancy period. So let's just say that the interim occupancy period only lasts for uh, two months. That'll be a, a total loss of about $6,600. Now, once you close this property, you're going to flip uh, to a mortgage and get off the interim occupancy fees. Right now, occupancy is deadly because the interest rates that the developer uses is the one-year Bank of Canada rate, which at the time of making this video was 7.89%. It's actually in your best interest to get to closing as soon as possible because your interest rates will be a lot lower than this. So in this example, I'm using a 5.5% interest rate uh, at a five-year fixed. By the way, I'm not recommending you get a five-year fix. I'm just using this as I want to show a five-year projection, and I don't want to calculate each year differently. So I want to keep things simple with a 30-year amortization on this, assuming you put a 20% down on your original $1 million purchase price, giving you a mortgage of $800,000. This boils down to a payment of just over uh, $4,500 uh, compared to the uh, $5,260 you're paying in interest only during the interim occupancy. Interim occupancy was actually not a bad thing for investors before the rates went up as it was actually better from a cash flow perspective than having the mortgage kick in. But today it's the worst thing ever. So I hope your property is not sitting in interim occupancy uh, for too long. Uh, we're just going to ignore the uh, utilities, uh, just assume that uh, the tenant is paying for all of them in this example. So now we have just over uh, 2310 and some change uh, that you're paying out of pocket as your cash flow. However, keep in mind that you're actually paying principal, uh, so you're basically paying yourself this money. Uh, you can see in the first month uh, that you're paying um, $875.64 and then uh, $879.66 in principal. So you, if you want to look at this from a yearly perspective, you can get your total cash flow and then add it back to your uh, mortgage principal pay down. So I'll update that 
on my calculator here. So in the first year, I get uh, 10776 69 so then my actual loss is just under $17,000 for year one. You can continue to extrapolate this into year two, three, four, five, uh, however long you want to. Uh, I just use the, the same number for every year, um, assuming that you're offsetting any inflation in your expenses with the uh, increase in rents. I also use the actual mortgage pay principal repayments um, for every year. Uh, assuming we're on a five-year fix, so the uh, mortgage uh, rate doesn't change. So now at the end of the day, uh, you're out of pocket uh, about uh, 145000 which is your cash flow, and uh, it paid down just over um, $60,000 of your mortgage, uh, which in essence you're paying yourself. Um, I like to think of it as a forced savings, uh, which results in an actual loss of uh, just under $85,000. So now that you've got the numbers done, you can ask yourself these two questions. Number one, am I able to afford the monthly cash flow? Am I able to pay this extra $2,300 per month? And number two, for how long? One year, two year, indefinitely? If you're able to afford these payments and for an extended period of time, then fortunately you're in a good position to hold, at least for a year, because after a year, you're at least going to be eligible for a HSC rebate and you won't be hit with the home flipping tax. Based on our calculation, it makes sense to hold for a year because it will cost you um, about $17,000, but you're not losing on your HSC rebate of $24,000 plus interest. So you'll be ahead by at least um, $7,000, uh, assuming the prices don't change and stay exactly the same. You wouldn't be able to see this without doing the math. So now the question that no one knows is what about the future prices of Toronto? There's a good possibility that the prices could go down even further than today. This is a decision that you're going to have to make uh, on your own. As I can tell you right now, that even after over two decades of studying the real estate market and getting my real estate degree, it's impossible to predict the future. So I just won't do it anymore. I used to try to do it in the past, but after being wrong a few times, I've learned my lesson. Plus, it's much easier to not worry about the real estate prices on a day-to-day -day basis. I look at my real estate portfolio the same way I look at my value investing stock portfolio and just hang on for the long run. Uh, the magic of compounding interest, inflation, and time will reward me at the end. If you've made good investments into good properties and can hold them long enough, you should be okay based on the historical data. If you think that the prices are going to recover within this time period, it's best that you hold as your alternative decision would be to lose $330,000 in this example. So let's say you were right and the prices do start to recover because the central banks start to lower their interest rates and buyers start coming back into the market. So the prices go up by just let's just say by 5%. So 5% of like 800 grand is like $40,000. So that's almost equivalent to uh, almost three years of carrying this property uh, in this example. So if you sold it one year from now, you lose a lot less money. If the property goes up by 10%, uh, which is um, $80,000, that is equivalent to carrying the property for almost five years. And don't forget that in the past, we've seen years where there were double digit increases in prices, even as much as over 30% in one year. The question is, when do you believe that the prices will start to recover? And are you able to carry the property until then so you can sell at a higher price than today? I know some of you are going to say, what about the opportunity cost of owning a property and the potential gains you could have made if you liquidated the property and took that money and invested it elsewhere? I could go into this in crazy detail and think about this from every single angle, which I recommend that you do. However, for the sake of this video, we're assuming that you're about to make a decision to lose everything you've worked for and under the assumption that it's going to be very challenging for you to get another mortgage. So I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole in this video. Now, the final thing is going to be the break-even analysis. So when are you going to be able to recover all of your money from this property? I broke down the numbers here and uh, the total purchase price, uh, if you actually see uh, after all your expenses, is just over $1,060,000 uh, and some change. I know you bought it for $1 million, but you need to add every single penny that you've sunk into this acquisition on this property, and that includes all your closing costs. I see a lot of agents ignoring this in their calculations, but I never recommend that you do this. 
We'll assume that today's selling price is $800,000. Then we'll add the losses uh, that we incur uh, for the year uh, to the purchase price. Okay, so then it adds to the investment price here. And then we're going to add the agent commissions uh, with the HST uh, over here. And then what we'll do is we'll do a simple equation right here. You can see my equation where I basically uh, subtract the difference of the two values. And then I divide it by today's value to see what the percentage uh, of an increase we would need to have a break even. Okay. Then I, expo and I, and then I expanded this over, uh, over for the five years. So, in th so the conclusion is based on all of our assumptions, you'll have to see like a 50% increase in the price of the property uh, compared to today's um, prices uh, to break even in five years. The point here is to do your numbers. Now, let's clarify the circumstances where it's probably a good idea to abandon ship if you are in a bad financial situation where the monthly costs to carry the property after you've rented it out is so negative to a point where if you were to sustain this for any period less than a year, it would put you into financial ruin, you probably need to abandon ship. So in our example, if you can't carry the $2,300 per month for more than a year, then you're going to want to make a difficult decision and uh, take the loss. You understand your financial situation better than anyone else. So you would need to weigh the losses on the selling price versus carrying the cost of the property as I did in this example. What is really unfortunate is that if someone taught you how to do your numbers properly, you probably wouldn't be in the situation right now because if you did, you probably wouldn't have bought the property in the first place. I'm not going to really get into this in this video, but the majority of so-called investors and even real estate agents out there have no idea how to calculate their numbers. Ask yourself, did you even do a cash flow analysis or look at the potential return on investment when you first purchased a property? Be honest with yourself, as I think the majority of your answers will be no, because I'm in the trenches, I see how it works out there, and I see what's going on. You probably relied on some numbers done by another real estate agent trying to convince you that this is a great investment. So their numbers are all catered to push this narrative. You didn't do your numbers, so you're the one bearing all the responsibility at the end of the day. Where's your agent now when you need them the most? Probably hiding, hoping you don't call. One thing to remember is this. You need to learn from your mistakes and not repeat them again. This is much easier said than done because I make the same stupid mistakes many, many times before actually changing. I've been burned in my real estate investments a few times, so now I built a system around it. Next time you want to jump into something that you think is going to make you a lot of money, remember this lesson that you've learned. It's really up to you because this could be a really expensive education that you can learn from and then can go on to make even more money from it. Or you can completely flush this money down the toilet and foolishly repeat it again. This may be a financial setback, but the good news is that you're still alive and you can make it back and you can persevere through this difficult time. Tough times make us stronger. Trust me, I've been going through it a tough time my entire life. I was bullied in school. I had no money growing up, so I had to figure things out on my own, which got me into trouble. When I first arrived in Toronto, I was over $100,000 in debt because I lost my shirt in an overseas venture. I had to live frugally, and it sucked for a few years, but I'm back to my best life right now. But that doesn't mean I'm not going through tough times. Like my mom's dying of cancer but uh, we have our issues, so I don't see her. That really sucks. So life sucks. Embrace it. What I've learned during my short life is that life is not easy, but it's still worth living, not for myself, but for my family and the people that depend on me and love me. So let's end this on a positive note. The opportunity in our generation are endless. Don't let these setbacks get you down. I've had some very expensive lessons in my life that have cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably even over a million dollars if I calculate all the stupid decisions I've made in my life. However, the key was to never give up. Look for solutions, be creative, live to see another day because you never know what the day will bring, who you'll meet, what door will be open for you. Also, don't give up on real estate. I know a lot of people are having a bad experience with real estate right now and will think that they will never buy another investment property again because they lost so much money. 
that would be a terrible shame because real estate, if done right, can be one of your best investment vehicles to create wealth for you and your family. I personally got out of the hole that I dug for myself through real estate. And if I could do it, you can do it too. So I'll be going into more details on my insane story in my future videos. So if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe, like, and bell notification button to follow me along my journey. I truly wish you all the best during this difficult market and hope that my experience can give you some hope for the times ahead. If there's anything else you'd like to know about in regards to real estate, business, investing, or life in general, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I currently do read all my comments and try to reply to them personally, but when I get busy, I won't be able to. So get me when you can. Also, I've made this other real estate video, so you can watch it to expand your real estate knowledge, and I'll see you in the next video.